Dubai Air Show 2025, just witnessed something that made every defense analyst freeze mid-sentence. Russia's Su-57 didn't arrive with press releases or fanfare. It simply appeared on the tarmac. And within minutes, every camera lens in the Middle East pointed in one direction. This isn't another fighter jet making rounds at aviation events. This is the only non-Western fifth-generation platform that shows up, performs live, and leaves audiences questioning everything they thought they knew about modern air superiority. If you want to understand why this single aircraft commanded more attention than entire pavilions, hit subscribe now because what happened in Dubai changes the conversation about who controls the skies in 2025. The silence that shook Dubai. The Su-57 rolled onto the Dubai runway at exactly 11.47 a.m. local time, and something unusual happened across the exhibition halls. Competitors from Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Dassault had representatives who stopped mid-presentation to check their phones. Within 90 seconds, live feeds from the flight line spiked to over 240,000 concurrent viewers, a number that typically takes headline acts three days to accumulate. Russia didn't book the prime demonstration slot, didn't distribute advanced promotional materials, and didn't even confirm attendance until 72 hours before the event. Yet the moment that aircraft touched down, booth traffic dropped by an estimated 34% across competing pavilions as crowds migrated toward the static display area. What they saw there wasn't just another fighter. It was a machine that defied the fundamental assumptions Western engineers have held about stealth aircraft design for the past two decades, and the implications of those differences run deeper than most realize. The Physics of Impossible Flight Watch closely when the Su-57 executes what pilots call a pancake flat spin, and you'll witness something that violates traditional aerodynamic principles. The aircraft rotates 360 degrees on its vertical axis, while maintaining a near-zero forward velocity at an altitude of just 350 meters, a regime where most fighters would enter an unrecoverable stall within 2.3 seconds. This capability stems from the AL-41F1 engines, producing 33,000 pounds of thrust each with full three-dimensional vectoring allowing pitch and yaw control purely through exhaust redirection when conventional control surfaces become aerodynamically ineffective. Western fifth-generation platforms like the F-22 have two-dimensional thrust vectoring limited to pitch control, while the F-35 has none at all, a deliberate design choice based on beyond-visual-range combat doctrine. The Su-57's ability to sustain controllable flight at 38-degree angles of attack means it can point its nose and weapons at targets, while moving in completely different directions, a phenomenon engineers call post-stall maneuvering authority. But raw aerobatics tell only part of the story, because what Russia demonstrated in the skies above Dubai directly contradicts what their engineers were quietly testing on the ground. The radar nobody wants to talk about. Beneath the Su-57's nose sits the N036 Bielka radar system, but that's actually just the primary array in what amounts to a distributed radar network built into the airframe itself. Two additional X-band AESA arrays are mounted on the wing leading edges, angled outward at 50 degrees to provide lateral coverage, meaning this fighter can track targets to its sides without turning, a capability unique among operational Gen 5 platforms. The system combines five separate radar arrays, totaling over 2,500 transmit-receive modules, compared to the F-35's single 1,200-module array. Though American engineers argue their signal processing software compensates through superior algorithms. In 2024, Russian sources claimed detection ranges of 400 kilometers against conventional targets and 90 kilometers against reduced signature targets though independent verification remains impossible, and Western analysts typically discount these figures by 30 to 40%. The Stealth Compromise Engineers Debate 
Stand behind a Su-57 on the ground, and you'll immediately notice something that would make a Lockheed Martin stealth engineer visibly uncomfortable. Fully exposed engine nozzles with no serrated edges or ceramic coating to reduce infrared signature. The aircraft's rear quarter radar cross-section is estimated at 0.5 to 1.0 square meters roughly 50 to 100 times larger than the F-22's rear aspect signature of 0.01 square meters, according to open source analysis of the planform geometry. Russia's engineers made a calculated trade. They accepted reduced stealth from certain angles in exchange for the superior cooling, maintenance accessibility, and thrust vectoring range that fully articulated nozzles provide. The frontal radar cross-section tells a different story, with sawtooth panel edges, internal weapons carriage, and ram coatings potentially achieving 0.1 to 0.3 square meters. Not invisible, but small enough to reduce detection ranges by 75%, compared to fourth-generation fighters at certain frequencies. The weapons bay engineering marvel. The Su-57 carries two internal weapons bays, but unlike the F-35's cramped compartments, that require complex mechanical ejection systems, the Russian design uses a remarkably simple solution that increases weapons compatibility. Each bay measures 4.6 meters long, 19% longer than the F-35's bays, allowing carriage of weapons up to 5.5 meters total length when mounted on internal rail launchers that extend slightly into the airstream during release. This extra length permits the aircraft to internally carry the Cake 59 Mk2 cruise missile with a 280 kilometer range, the R-37M air-to-air -air missile with a claimed 400 kilometer range, and even the 1,500 kilogram KB-1500 guided bomb payloads that Western Gen 5 fighters must carry externally, sacrificing their stealth profiles entirely. Russian weapon integration specialists designed the bay doors with pneumatic actuators that open and close in 0.6 seconds compared to 1.2 to 1.8 seconds for F-22 bay doors, reducing the window where internal weapons carriage compromises radar signature. The Syria secret that changed everything. Between 2018 and 2023, Russia deployed Su-57s to Kamemim Air Base in Syria for what they officially termed evaluation trials, but flight logs and satellite imagery tell a more revealing story. The aircraft flew 78 combat sorties over that period, primarily at night, testing sensor integration against active air defense systems, ground surveillance radar, and real electronic warfare environments that no simulation can replicate. On March 17, 2022, a Su-57 allegedly achieved a radar lock on an Israeli F-35I over Lebanon at approximately 95 kilometers range, a claim Israel neither confirmed nor denied, but responded to by altering flight patterns near Syrian airspace for the following six weeks. Russian engineers used this deployment to validate the L-band IFF arrays embedded in the wing-leading edges, which theoretically can detect low-frequency resonance patterns from stealth aircraft at ranges where X-band radar sees nothing, though Western physicists remain deeply skeptical of the underlying physics. The combat deployment revealed critical problems too. Engine reliability fell below 85%, mission-capable rates, requiring Moscow to accelerate the Item 30 Next Generation engine program that won't reach serial production until 2027. The Su-57's Dubai appearance wasn't just another airshow spectacle, it was a calculated demonstration that Russia's aerospace industry remains operational, innovative, and combat-ready despite every economic pressure designed to stop it. While Western analysts debate radar cross-sections and thrust-to-weight ratios, Moscow is already flying missions, collecting data, and refining a platform that challenges fundamental assumptions about what fifth-generation air combat actually requires. If this breakdown changed how you understand modern air superiority, subscribe now, because the competition between these platforms is only beginning. And what happens next will determine which nations control the skies for the next three decades.